Hello guys, Solitaire Gaming here. Back from another part of Halo Queen, and let's get started. Are you fine, Nagisa son? Nagisa quickly turned around and smiled. Most of her baggage was the food. Even though they probably didn't need that, given there were only two days left, she was still hell-bent on keeping all of it around. It's not like they were forcing the food on her, but Soichi and Sakumi's knapsack were full of a different assortment of items such as tableware, a portable gas burner, blankets, and a light. And the like? Having finished checking the room, Soichi turned his PDA on again. He then turned the corresponding icon for the map. From what he could see, there appeared to be two ways to get to the upper floor. The first way was an elevator at the south side of the map. The other way was as a staircase at the north side. There are many other staircases, but they are all marked with an X, which meaning they are blocked off. The northernmost one wasn't. Put simply, their pit, the options of getting upstairs were extremely limited. Sakumi drew her face in close to look at Suichi's PDA, since his was the only one with detailed information on the, on the map, thanks to the software upgrade. Let's see, I think our best bet is the staircase. Higisa pointed that out. Yeah, it would be faster for sure, but think about it. If we easily come up with that suggestion, wouldn't others have the same idea as well? Yup. Nagisa nod in agreement. So we're all okay with the staircase then. And thus, the second day of the game had begun for the group. When they arrived at the staircase, Suichi realized that his way of thinking was fundamentally flawed. Escaping up the staircase would be much easier than the elevators due to the danger of being stuck with nowhere to go. While that was true, he realized that he failed to take other possible external factors into account. Sakumi, after carefully spying around the corner, returned with, with the news. He had no doubt about it. Switch couldn't believe his eyes when it came upon the staircase. A small barricade had already been erected in front of it with Nagasawa standing guard. Suichi had expected an amateur building something like this. Everyone so far had weapons about as powerful as a wooden stick, so if assumption was correct, then the barricades posed no significant threat to them. What was the problem was the large, modern, western-style bowl that Nagasawa currently held. Given this new revelation, a barricade this small would easily hold out. Suichi started having second thoughts about their plan, while Sakumi and Nagisa just seemed surprised. Damn it, what the hell? Suichi risked a peek around the corner a second time. Fortunately, Nagasawa didn't notice him and just surveyed his surroundings. He was definitely holding a weapon. Suichi mentally clicked his tongue. She would have considered the possibility that some of the other players may have obtained different types of weapons when they had obtained the combat knife. In the end, they just end up wasting more valuable time. They should have just gone straight for the upper floor right after acquiring the combat knife. But they couldn't cry over spilled milk. They had assumed their plan was a safe way to avoid conflict, but actually backfired and they left them easily open to an ambush. But it was only natural. Ultimately, Switch's group wasn't professional soldiers, but just ordinary people. These types of decisions weren't, weren't commonplace to them in the least. Now they faced the barricade-cated staircase with someone guarding it with a bowl. Even the amateur could see, the way, could see they were at a great disadvantage. Nagasawa would shoot one of them before they could cover a, a few dozen meters of ground. Even if they did make it, crossing the barricade without getting hit would be impossible. There was also the time limit to worry about. They used up a lot of time making it to the staircase there wasn't much time left before the entire floor became a forbidden area. In front of them was Nagasawa. Behind them was time. They were truly caught between Celia and Claribus. Nope. 
Nagisa said that for word expression. If that was possible, if that were possible, it would be the ideal way to go to go. But he attacked Nagisa on Karen yesterday, putting trust into someone who attacked people who seemed weaker than him was entirely out of question. I probably would have tried talking to him as well if he hadn't attacked you in Hojo-san. Suichi smiled barely. No, it would be better if we didn't. Sakami's proposal seemed good at first glance, but Suichi rejected the idea once he thought about it a bit. For instance, if the elevator is out of service when we get there, we won't have enough time to backtrack it here. For example, what if the elevator was barricaded as well? Or was simply stopped at another floor? We simply couldn't chance it with the time they had left. If time ran out while doing it, their callers would explode. If worse comes to worse, I'll rush him. That'll leave you guys an opportunity to wait, Nagisa-san. Nagisa was nowhere to be seen. Oh no, what is she doing this time? So she looked frankly around for her. Then he spotted her for a slight distance away, spying down the hall Nagasawa was in. She was at the corner opposite of the one that Suichi and Sakami had peered through er around earlier. Nagasawa shouldn't be visible from an angle, so... When Nagisa, ma ma Nagisa stayed put and pointed down the hall, it seemed something had caught his attention. What is it? The pair crossed the passage, being careful all the while not to be spotted by Nagasawa. Nagisa pointed down the hallway again. Oh no! Suichi and Sakumi looked at the spot Nagisa's fingertip was pointing at. When they did, they spotted the girl from yesterday looking down the same hallway. It seemed she hadn't noticed them yet due to her gaze being transfixed solely on Nagasawa. Nagisa's face grew wor worried. Su Suichi briefly went over everything in his mind. He weighed the risk of rushing out there about Karen's position, about other enemies, and the time they had for remaining. Sakumi looked up at Suichi and smiled as if she were telling him she, she could read his mind. Why are you pretending to be thinking deeply about it? That's what Sakumi's smile seemed to convey. Ha. Uh, Suichi then turned towards Sakumi and Nagisa. Let's team up with Hojo san. Two girls agree with Suichi's plan. The detour to reach Karen wasn't particularly difficult to tra traverse. All they had to do was backtrack and go through a few rooms. I'm sure she'll be fine. She wouldn't do anything reckless like that. Nagisa was really worried about Karen. She was probably grateful to her for protecting her from Na Nagasawa. On the other hand, Suichi wasn't worried about it. Though they were low on time, they still had enough time to pull this off. Since Karen was cautious enough to decline, Suichi's offer to join the group, she probably wouldn't resort to force just yet. Yeah, that should be it. Suichi checked the PDA and nodded. So long as she had moved, she, she should be just up ahead. You two stay here. He stopped Sak Sakami and Nagisa as he reached the corner. He doubted anything would go wrong, but he wasn't taking any chances. Suichi quietly peered around the corner. Huh? Karen wasn't there. He walked a few steps down the hall. He didn't spot her anywhere. Just to be safe, he checked down the hallway, but he could only see Nagasawa. Then at that moment... Whoa! Suichi was caught by surprise. He heard Karen's voice behind him. She snuck, on, she, she snuck up on him without him realizing it. Ojisan, it's me, Mitsuragi. Suichi immediately raised his hand to show he had no intention of attacking. Phew. Suichi slowly turned around as relief filled his heart. Staying there was Karen and Hojo, glaring at Suichi with the eyes of a hawk. She was unarmed but had gotten into a martial arts stance. Karen asked this as she shifted her feet, still looked locked in onto Suichi. Her voice was as sharp and as harsh as her glare. She most likely shifted her position to prepare herself if Suichi had any backup. All of that put Suichi on edge right away. She wasn't like this when they met yesterday. She had been much calmer and her voice wasn't so commanding. Above all else, the hostility she was showing was uncharacteristic of her. 
Want to team up with you. You want to get past the barricade to, that barricade too. Suichi gestured at the staircase with his chin, since his hands were still in the air. Karen molded over while carefully think, studying Suichi's face. If we both need to get through that barricade, strength and numbers is better, right? And to be honest, Nagisa and Sakumi aren't really suited for this kind of task. That's right! As soon as Suichi gave that answer, Karen's expression felt like it softened ever so slightly. So what do you say? I'm not asking for a permanent alliance, just until we get past the barricade. Is that okay for you? Given the fact that she wanted to get past the barricade as well, it seemed like sound like a fair deal. Otherwise, if she went at it solo, like she'd been doing up to that point, it'd be a lot tougher. Karen sighed, then eased her stance. Thanks, Hojo-san. Well then, I want to regroup with my companions and let them know what's going on down. Does that work with you? For you? Karen nodded. Nagisa, Nagisa ran over to Karen with great stride as soon as she saw her. Karen's body froze immediately, but soon relaxed when Nagisa embraced her with a bright smile. Uh, hi. Karen honestly felt awkward about the situation judging from the stiff expression on her face. So she felt he understood Karen's behavior right away. It might have not been his group that seemed strange, not it might have been his group that seemed strange, not her. So she, he, she had been alone this entire time and attention was definitely taking its toll. One look at her exhausted face revealed that she probably hadn't gotten any sleep, to say the least, of even considering the idea of rest. It was probably tough to stay for her normal, normal self, given the situation. Her circumstances were vastly different from Suichi's group, who had been able, who had been able to get a decent amount of rest so far. -san? Hmm? Where expression appeared on Sakumi's face as she glanced at Karen. She was probably thinking the same thing as Suichi. Yeah, I know. It'd be great if she joined us at, at this rate. Suichi muttered that in a hushed tone. Yeah, being alone is painful. Just then, Suichi shook his head to drive away the image of the person who had appeared in his mind. Suichi waited for Nagisa to settle down a little and then began to talk. Okay, guys, let's talk about what to do next. Suichi said that as he showed the others the screen of his PDA. As you can see, you only have a short amount of time left. It was the second day, and two and a half hours had already passed, leaving them less than half an hour until the first floor became a forbidden area. Let's wait a little while longer. If Nagasawa doesn't show any signs of leaving, then we'll have no choice but to rush him. He knew Sakami and Nagisa's expressions as stiffened once they heard that. However, Karen's expression hadn't changed in the slightest, probably because she had been planning on doing the same thing. She spoke with the same calm expression. It's not really a question of what. Oh, just are you good at fighting? I see. Then you and I will rush down the hall and take care of that bowl somehow. While that's going on, Nagisa san and Sakami will break through the barricade, something like that. We have no choice. Concerned, Sakumi was dead set against that plan and instead proposed something else. Yeah, Karen replied first. I was oh. At that moment, Suichi realized he hadn't considered that possibility at all. That's right, it takes a considerably higher level of skill to use a bow than a handgun. One can't just pick up a bow for the first time and expect to use it efficiently. I see. You got a good eye, Hojo san. Suichi was honestly impressed. Karen's friend was a member of, archery, of an archery club. If he's an amateur, then we probably won't have to worry about him firing a second shot, a second arrow. Even, getting, even given what little they knew, this fact was obvious. The only major problem was if the first arrow hit or missed. If they managed to dodge it, their overwhelming numbers would be an advantage. And this is where I'll be stopping off for today. Thank you for watching this part of Killer Queen. Have a great day and night wherever you are. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And please comment if you found anything interesting in the video.